Hi, everyone. I'm going to give you a little bit of a warning before I begin. Um, this is going to be a slightly nerdy presentation. So please bear with me. OK, I'm glad, I'm glad. <laughs> so when most people think of data, they think of artificial intelligence, data science, big data, data lakes, data warehouses. So I don't blame you if you call that nerdy, because I really do think it is. Now, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to try to change that perspective um, a little bit. And I'm going to talk about a framework of thinking about data that really allows you to think about how data applies um, in your world, in the world of business and marketing. So when you look at um, applications um, that are used to build customer experiences, there are three different types of applications, right? You have systems of engagement where your customer is interacting with your organization through websites, through mobile, through social media, etc. You have systems of insight that collect information about the customer and give you insight about how exactly you should be targeting these customers. And then you have systems of record. That's where the information around who you're selling to, like your customers, and what you're selling, like your products, and how you're selling it, like your orders, are managed. So all of these systems talk to each other through data. That is the mode of communication between all applications that exist today. This is a website that our company has been working on for the last few months. Uh, it's the shopping channel, now known as the shopping choice. Now, if you just look at the product detail page itself, there are various data elements that are present on the page. You have videos and product content, customer reviews, recommendations. All of the, these data points are really coming from a bunch of different data sources, starting from content management, where you may be um, publishing or managing your media banners, um, advertisements, to ERPs, where inventory and orders are getting managed. And all of these systems collectively create this experience that you see on a website. So I'm going to walk you back a few years. Uh, in the 1990s, where I first met, met my best friend right here, uh, who actually came all the way from New York to see me speak. I really hope it's worth your while. <laughs> um, so in those days, we had the world of giant IT um, platforms and IT companies like IBM, Oracle's, SAP's of the world, where they would give you packaged applications um, with all of the functionality that you need within a single application, right? So all of the gray boxes that you see in the left box, there are functionality that each of these big companies would offer you. So an ERP, for instance, would have pricing, inventory, order management, product information management, vendor management, all of that available in a single application. So really, there was no need for these systems to be open or, and to communicate with anybody else in the world through data. Um, these were just giant monolithic applications. Now, fast forwarding to the world today, where we're in the world of an app for everything. So starting from your smartphones, where you have an app for everything, to um, building customer experiences where there is really a web service or, or an application that performs a very specific function. Um, so if you look at all of those blue um, colored boxes, these are individual vendors offering functionality like order management on its own, a PIM, a CMS. You know, so what ends up happening because of this new world order is all of these applications need to speak to each other, right? So a CMS may need information from a PIM, and ERP needs to talk to a PIM to pass down product information, et cetera. And all of that is happening, once again, by sharing um, the currency of exchange of the world today, which is data. So this is the MarTech landscape, and I think most of you should be familiar with this. 
Um, there are over 6,000 individual applications available in the MarTech landscape today. So you can just imagine what the world looks like when it comes to the complexity around integrating all of these systems um, in any given, uh, in, in building any given customer experience. So what does this mean to you, right? So at the end of the day, what marketing and what business wants to do is to create a unified experience for your customers. And that is impossible to do if you have data silos, if you have many applications that don't talk to each other, many departments using many different types of applications that don't talk to each other, the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing, and most organizations, most large organizations, have to go through that. And who benefits from that? are large system integrators that have to do point-to-point -point integrations for you guys. They're making a ton of money doing that, I can guarantee you. Um, and it also creates this complex mess of integrations that nobody really understands. Definitely, the business does not understand. And even in some cases, the IT doesn't really fully understand it either. Then you have the issue of data governance. You hear about this issue from you know, your IT partners. Data governance, privacy, lineage. What do you do about that? What does that even mean? So what that really means is that nobody understands who owns the data, how the data travels from one application to another, how, who should be even given access to this data, and then you get into issues like what we saw in the earlier presentation by Alex around you know, Cambridge Analytica that ended up um, being involved in a massive um, data breach uh, for Facebook, right? So it's, it's a really big issue today, the privacy issue. Um, and finally, dark data. We all know that most of the data that we're collecting is ending up in data lakes and data swamps, and it's really not useful at all. So what are we going to do now? Where is the future taking us? So um, I think that over the last decade, we have definitely dealt with the problem of volume because storage is cheap. We have also dealt with the problem of velocity or, or the speed at which you need to process the data because the processing power is there now to do that. So really the biggest challenge that we're gonna ha have or face in the next few years is the problem of variety, and that's because of the sheer number of applications that need to be integrated with each other. All of these applications have completely different modes of communication, and in order for us, and I hate to admit this because I'm IT, and IT doesn't like to admit they need any help, but, we need help from business and marketing to really understand this data. We need the collaboration between IT and business or we're not going to get there. And the reason is that you guys understand the product. You understand the customer. And you understand how your customers interact with the product. And that is what the data tells us. So how is it possible for IT to look at this data and really truly understand what it even means? So I invite you to please participate in this activity and please help us poor folks in understanding the data, okay? Need for agility. So we, are, we need platforms, integration platforms, that are going to allow us to move extremely quickly. Because as soon as we get our arms around one problem or one application, another application is just waiting at the door. Right? So we need to be able to do integrations of these applications, which is data integrations, once again, extremely fast. So you can't rely on these large vendors, I'm not saying come to me, but you can if you want, um, to do these types of things for you because you know months go by, years go by, and nothing really gets done. right? So you need to be able to move fast. And finally, the pace of integration is going to determine the pace of integration, uh, in innovation. So this is extremely important. 80% of any project, the budget 
80% of the budget of any project is spent on data integration initiatives. So that means that only 20% of the budget is left for you to play with in terms of innovation. So if you want a little bit more of that budget, if you want a little bit more of innovation, then you're gonna have to perform these integrations of systems extremely fast, and this is why data should be important to you. That's it, thank you. Sure. Now you can grill me. <laughs> Hi there, I'm Akiva. Uh, thanks Hello. for the presentation. Uh, I was just wondering, um, you recommend uh, that businesses focus on integrating uh, their data, uh, but then you mentioned that the companies that currently integrate the data are making a, lo a lot of money um, and that there needs to be a move away from them. Um, so how exactly do you recommend that businesses integrate their data? Is it by standardization or is it uh, by some other means? Yeah, so there are a ton of self-service tools that are now available in the market. Ours is one of them as well, uh, that allow businesses to actually get involved in the data preparation, standardization and enrichment process. So that allows IT and business to actually get a 360 degree view of the data from multiple applications that exist within the organization um, so that they can make sense of it. So IT doesn't just get the requirements from the business you know, at the beginning, like in a waterfall type of method. They actually involve the business in an agile fashion throughout the process of integration so they can validate very, very quickly their understanding of what this data even means and then use it for analytics, for targeting, for whatever you can think. Right, so, the, so really what I'm saying is the idea is to be able to get a 360 degree view of data that exists within multiple applications across the enterprise. So you have one place where business and IT can both look at the same thing together. They can get on the same page and collaborate with each other in terms of understanding what this data means. Does that make sense? Okay. Hi. Hello. Didn't think I'll stand up. Okay. Um, now, uh, if I understand you right, basically business will never look at data. You know, this is real life. We look at data reports. So what we're saying, or what you're saying is that we look at a process, that's where business and IT can look at, mm -hmm. and what IT can do is build those maybe bridges or links to the various databases, and that's where the data comes in, depending on what the process you're looking at. That's, that's exactly what I'm talking about, yes. We're talking about the ETL process, which is typically black boxed from the business. Business d doesn't get any sort of transparency into that process at all. So we're saying that in doing that integration of all of these systems together, business should have a say. They should be able to look at this data, help IT understand what this data means, uh, disregard things that don't mean anything. It's the business who really truly understands what we're measuring and what we're doing with this data. So they should be involved in that process. Data is like 80% of it is either a SAP database, an SQL, exactly. or Oracle. And, uh, so yeah, so if you, if you give access to business directly to databases and SQL and JSON, et cetera, of course nobody is interested I in that. I wouldn't be in business. De yeah. Definitely no one wants to do that. But there are platforms that are now available in the market that actually take data from disparate systems that are sitting in completely different formats and brings it together in a view that is understandable by the business. It's, it's like spreadsheets type of view so they can understand you know, what are all the fields, for example, for the product that the customer is going to see on my product detail page. You know, that's just one example. Does that make sense? Yeah.
Thank you very much.